The Lord be with you, and welcome. My name is Glenn Schlecht. I'm the senior pastor here at Emanuel Lutheran in Loveland, Colorado. If you're new to us, I am so glad you joined us. We're continuing our summer series called You Can't Make This Stuff Up as we're working our way through some of the big stories in Genesis. Today, we're hearing about Cain and Abel, two brothers, a murder, and our father's handling of this very ugly situation under the headline, God Frees Murdering Brother. Would you pray with me as we begin our worship? Father in heaven, we thank you for the Father you are, a Father of love, of grace, of mercy, and of life. As we come to you today, open our hearts and our minds to hear and receive your gifts again today. You know what we need, and we entrust ourselves to you. So we pray this with boldness, with confidence, with gratitude, and with anticipation, asking us in Jesus' name, amen. Please join in our opening hymn. Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please join me in our call to worship from Psalm 86. Hear me, Lord, and answer me, for I am poor and needy. Guard my life, for I am faithful to you. Save your servant who trusts in you. You are my God. Have mercy on me, Lord, for I call to you all day long. Bring joy to your servant, Lord, for I put my trust in you. You, Lord, are forgiving and good, abounding in love to all who call to you. Hear my prayer, Lord. Listen to my cry for mercy. When I am in distress, I call to you because you answer me. Among the gods there is none like you, Lord. No deeds can compare with yours. All the nations you made will come and worship before you, Lord. They will bring glory to your name. You alone if we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. We hear the call to trust in God always, but honestly, some days our stresses and doubts are even more real to us than God, and trust is elusive. Let us then confess our sins, including our lack of trust to God our Father, first in the quiet of our hearts, 
then in the song of confession, and finally together in the spoken confession. gracious God. We remember how Abraham dared to believe in your promises, to trust you, but belief like that can be hard to come by. We are often inclined to think God helps those who help themselves instead of daring to rely on the word of our Creator. Forgive us. With God's help, we confront and confess our fears and struggles, the hurt we cause and the hurt we have felt from others, our sins of thought, word, and deed, and we call upon a power greater than our own, Almighty God, to resist their pull and to bring the healing we need. Hear us, O God, as we confess our frailty and failings and forgive us for the sake of Jesus, your Son. Sisters and brothers in Christ, though fear should beset us, Though danger cause us to close up our doors, though troubles assail and lead us away from the ways of grace, only one thing is necessary. Turn back to God's promise of grace. God's pro- God promises to forgive when His people repent. As a called and ordained servant of the Word, I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit.
Today's epistle reading is from Romans chapter 6, verses 1 through 11. Shall we go on sinning so that grace may increase? By no means. We are those who have died to sin. How can we live in it any longer? Or do you not know that all of us who are baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his, vet, into his death? We were therefore buried with him through baptism into death, in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead through the glory of the Father, we too may live a new life. For if we've been united with him in a death like this, we will certainly be united with him in a resurrection like this. For we know that our old self was crucified with him so that the body ruled by sin might be done away with, that we should no longer be slaves to sin, because anyone who has died has been set free from sin. Now, if we died with Christ, we believe that we'll also live with him. For we know that since Christ was raised from the dead, he cannot die again. Death no longer has mastery over him. The death he died, he died to sin once for all. But the life he lives, he lives to God. In the same way, count yourselves dead to sin, but alive to God in Christ Jesus. This is the word of the Lord. Our gospel reading is from Matthew chapter 10, verses 40 through 42. Jesus said, anyone who welcomes me, excuse me, anyone who welcomes you welcomes me. And anyone who welcomes me welcomes the one who sent me. Whoever welcomes a prophet as a prophet will receive a prophet's reward. And whoever welcomes a righteous person as a righteous person will receive a righteous person's reward. And if anyone gives even a cup of cold water to one of these little ones who is my disciple, truly I tell you, that person will certainly not lose their reward. This is the gospel of the Lord. Our Old Testament reading is from Genesis chapter 4, verses 1 through 16. Adam made love to his wife Eve, and she became pregnant and gave birth to Cain. She said, with the help of the Lord, I brought forth a man. Later she gave birth to his brother Abel. Now Abel kept flocks, and Cain worked the soil. In the course of time, Cain brought some of the fruits of the soil as an offering to the Lord. And Abel also brought an offering, fat portions from some of the firstborn of his flock. The Lord looked with favor on Abel and his offering, but on Cain and his offering, he did not look with favor. So Cain was very angry, and his face was downcast. Then the Lord said to Cain, Why are you angry? Why is your face downcast? If you do what is right, will you not be accepted? But if you do not do what is right, sin is crouching at your door. It desires to have you, but you must rule over it. Now Cain said to his brother Abel, let's go out to the field. While they were in the field, Cain attacked his brother Abel and killed him. Then the Lord said to Cain, where's your brother Abel? I don't know, he replied. Am I my brother's keeper? The Lord said, what have you done? Listen. Your brother's blood cries out to me from the ground. Now you are under a curse and driven from the ground, which opened its mouth to receive your brother's blood from your hand. When you work the ground, it will no longer yield its crops for you. You will be a restless wanderer on the earth. Cain said to the Lord, My punishment's more than I can bear. Today you're driving me from the land, and I'll be hidden from your presence. I will be a restless wanderer on the earth, and whoever finds me will kill me. But the Lord said to him, Not so. Anyone who kills Cain will suffer vengeance seven times over. Then the Lord put a mark on Cain so that no one who found him would kill him. So Cain went out from the Lord's presence and lived in the land of Nod, east of Eden. This is the word of the Lord. Good morning, boys and girls. Now, I want to share the story of Cain and Abel with you this morning, but we're going to do it in a little bit of a different way. I'm going to share it using emojis. Now, in case you don't know what emojis are, they're the little pictures that are on messages or on comments online that we use to really just express how we're feeling or the emotions. You know, there maybe is the laughing face emoji that shares just how funny that comment really was or sending that smiley face knowing that you're happy. 
And so we're going to use those to tell the story of Cain and Abel because there's a lot of feelings that each of the brothers feel in this story. So if you remember, we got to start with Adam and Eve. Last week, they listened to the serpent. That didn't go well. Well, now they've got two boys. They've got Cain and Abel. Now, Abel was a shepherd. He took care of the sheep. That was what his job was. And Cain, he was kind of like a farmer. He took care of the land. He took care of the plants and the trees. Now, way back in those days to worship God, to show God that they loved him, was to give offerings. Now, we sometimes think of offerings and we think of money. But a way that they gave offerings was they gave those things that they worked with. And so for Abel, he gave God some of his sheep as an offering. And Cain, he gave some of his plants, kind of those crops, those already gave to God as an offering. But God doesn't just want these things. He wants our hearts to be in the right place. He wants us to give these freely because we know that it's a way to show God's love, to show God that we love him. So with Abel, he was excited to give to God. He wanted to give these offerings to God. So God was pleased with it and that made Abel really happy. But you see, Cain wasn't as excited to give of these offerings. He wasn't excited to give his crops. And so God was a little upset and that made Cain really, really upset. So upset that he told his brother Abel to come out with him to the fields. And well, Cain ended up killing his brother, which obviously is not the right thing to do. And Cain knew that that was not a good thing to do. So God shows up and says, well, where is Abel? Now, Cain says to God, I don't know. I'm not my brother's keeper. But did Cain know where his brother was? Of course he did. He knew that his brother was dead because he had killed him. So God was not very happy with this, obviously, because once again, just like Adam and Eve, Cain didn't listen to the right things. He, did, did, he didn't do what God wanted him to do. So he said, there are consequences to your actions. And that's the same for us is when we do the wrong thing, sometimes there are consequences that we don't like very much. And so for Cain, he knew that his job was then going to be really hard, that it was going to be a lot of work, that he'd be sweating, and that he wouldn't get to keep those crops. He wouldn't really get the reward of working, which we like having a reward when we do something. But Cain wasn't going to get that because he did not listen and that he did the wrong thing. But we know that God is a God of love and grace, and he showed that love to Cain, even though he did something wrong. Now, there are consequences to his actions, but he was also reminded that God loved him very much. And God had put a mark on Cain so that he would not be killed by someone else, because that's what Cain was afraid of. Now someone's going to kill me since I killed my brother. But God said, no, 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 I will protect you. So we're reminded that even when we mess up, even when we do the wrong thing, while there might be consequences, we know ultimately that God's love is bigger than it all and that he always chooses to show us his love and his grace. And we know that that comes from Jesus' death on the cross, but more importantly, his resurrection and his promise to us that our sins are always forgiven. So going back to this idea of emojis and feelings, there might be days where you have this face on all the time, that it's a really great day, that you're really happy, you're really excited, but maybe there's also some days that you feel a little sad. Maybe you have some days where you feel scared or worried, and you know, some days my face just kind of looks like this. You're upset, you may be mad, you may be hurt by someone, and those days are really hard. But the thing is, it is totally okay to feel all of these feelings, to feel these emotions. You see, those are part of who we are, and we know that God has fearfully and wonderfully made us. And so some days it just is a sad day, or some days we just feel upset. But the thing is that we don't want to stay in those emotions that hurt us. Because I don't know if you've ever had a bad day, but it just kind of makes everything worse. When you can't get over something, when you just stay mad at someone, it ends up hurting you more than it does the other person. And one really good way to kind of deal with these emotions, to work through some of these feelings, is to ask God for his help. That we can't do it on our own sometimes. Sometimes we think, I am just going to be so mad at this person for so long. I can't get, I can't forgive him. I can't get over it. But with the, God's help, we are able to deal with some of those anger, our anger emotions or our sad emotions and ask God for his help. Because like he did with Cain, he always shows his love and his grace to us. He always reminds us that we are forgiven, that some days might not be the very best days, but we know that we are loved by him, that he is taking care of us, and that he is always with us. 
So let's do what I just said. Let's pray to God, thanking him for being with us always. Dear God, thank you so much for giving us feelings and emotion. It is so great that we can be happy, that we can be sad, that we can be excited. But we know that some days it's just hard to feel some of the things we feel. But help us to be reminded that you are with us, that you care about us, that you love us, and that you can help us work through all things. Amen. You can't make this stuff up. I mean, really. Celebrating Father's Day by talking about two brothers, one who became so angry, so jealous, that he murdered the other? Happy Father's Day. <laughs> Yee. And while what happened with Cain and Abel is obviously the extreme when it comes to your and my typical relationships, this is still our story. It is the story of Cain and Abel, brother, murdering brother. It's a story of Adam and Eve, two parents whose heartache I can't imagine as they watched what happened with their boys. It's God's story as He demonstrates for us what happens when it comes to sin and its consequences, and especially when it comes to His overriding grace and mercy and love. And it's our story as we relate to very real people who lived a, a long, long time ago and discover how little things really do change over time in terms of how we relate to one another and how God chooses to relate to us and deals with us. So with that, Let's get on with the murder, shall we? <laughs> so the stage was set by Cain and Abel bringing their offerings to the Lord. We read it here, verses 3 to 5. We're told, Cain brought some of the fruits of the soil as an offering to the Lord. And Abel also brought an offering, fat portions from some of the firstborn of his flock. The Lord looked with favor favor on Abel and his offering, but on Cain and his offering, he did not look with favor. Now, we can't go the direction of animal sacrifice, good, grain offering, plant sacrifice, not good. We just can't. The Lord doesn't go into a whole lot of detail with that, but he gives us enough to understand that the problem wasn't with what the brothers were bringing as their gift, as their offering to the Lord, but it was how they were being brought. It was about where their hearts were with bringing their gifts and their offering to the Lord. That's a message that really doesn't change. Over and over again throughout the Old Testament, we hear God saying that even though He required, laid out and demanded these specific sacrifices, animal and grain, He says He didn't really want their sacrifices. What He wanted was their hearts. St. Paul said pretty much the same thing to us in the New Testament. 2 Corinthians 8 and 9, when he tells us that God really doesn't want our money. God doesn't need our money. No. He wants us. He wants our hearts. He wants our love. Our trust. He wants to be in relationship with us what we physically offer and what we bring as our gifts, as our offering to the Lord, that's to represent what's going on in here. And the gratitude we feel for all 
that the Lord has provided for us. All that He has done and all that He continues to do and to reflect our love, our faith, and our trust in Him. Now, the Lord knows what's going on in our heads and in our hearts. He knew what was brewing inside of Cain. Cain was angry. His face showed it. And the Lord even tried to sway Cain away from what he knew was rolling around inside of him with the plans that he was making. He said this, verses 6 and 7, Then the Lord said to Cain, Why are you angry? Why is your face downcast? If you do what is right, will you not be accepted? But if you do not do what is right, sin is crouching at your door. It desires to have you, but you must rule over it. The Lord knows what's going on inside of you and me as well, in our heads, in our hearts. Let me ask you this. Have there been things in your life that you have felt were pretty unfair? Maybe it's in regard to your job or some of the relationships in your life. Unfairness when it came to your other siblings and how you were treated versus how they were. Or unfairness in regard to your spouse and things that go on between the two of you or with your co-workers, or with your friends. Are the things that set you off, things that really make you angry? I want you to take a moment to think about that. If you're watching, worshiping with others today, take some time to talk about this. But go ahead and pause me right now and reflect a bit on the questions there on your screen. Now, we can relate to Cain, can't we? And that in itself is a pretty sad statement. But it's a real one, isn't it? We need to know that just like God warned Cain, so it is for us. Sin is always crouching at our door. It desires to have you. It's wanting to take us down a dark and lonely path. A path filled with murder and anger and hatred and rage. A path filled with sadness and disappointment and frustration and ego and jealousy and pride. Don't fall for it, friends. Don't fall for it. And with Jesus, and with His help, we must, as God said, rule over it. We work hard to fight against those things we know are temptations in our lives and flee from them, run from them. But Cain did fall. That sin crouching at his door, he bit. He lied to his brother, got him to go out with him all alone to a field. And there he ambushed him, killed him. And then he turned right around and he lied to God when God came and confronted him with this. And he asked him, Where's your brother? Cain said, I don't know. Am I my brother's keeper? Am I supposed to be his babysitter and know where he is and what he's doing all the time? The fact of the matter is, we are called to be our brother's and our sister's keeper. We're here as family. 
and we're here to watch out for each other. When we see someone traveling down a path that is not good or not healthy and possibly even disastrous or destructive, we've got a responsibility as sisters and brothers together in this. A responsibility to to intervene, to step in, to confront, to have a conversation, a dialogue, and not out of judgment, not with underlying motives or evil intent to get back at them for what they did to me or said to me or embarrassed me. No. We have a responsibility to intervene and to step in out of love and with love and with care and with compassion. I know these are not easy conversations to have. What I'm laying out there, what God has laid out for us, it's not an easy thing to do. We even take a risk at at damaging those relationships when we do that. But we must. We don't want to see those that we love and care about get hurt. For Cain, there were consequences, to be sure, for what he did. Severe consequences. In fact, what we're told, God put him under a curse. The land would no longer produce crops for him. And he was sent from his home to wander the earth. God said that Cain would be hidden from his presence. Devastating, devastating consequences. And yet, God did not abandon Cain. In fact, God still loved Cain. The Lord promised to protect him. He promised that wherever he would go, that people would not in turn kill Cain for what he did to his brother. God put a mark on Cain in order to protect him. And out of God's love, out of His grace, and out of His mercy, God freed that murdering brother. So when we repeated that murderous act thousands and thousands of years later, when we, by our sin, by our rebellion, murdered our brother Jesus, nailing Him to that cross, we too have consequences that we continue to live with. The hurt and the pain that that we experience regularly. The brokenness that we see everywhere. The challenges we have with relationships and the people we care about and love that are not always so good. The disappointments and the frustrations that we feel and experience in our lives These are all a part of the consequences that we still feel. But, you see, our Father, our loving Father, has put a mark on us as well. He marked us with the waters of baptism. He fills us with His Holy Spirit. And He assures us that through faith in Him, that we will live even though we die. And that whoever whoever lives and believes in Jesus will never die. And our gracious and our loving and our merciful Father promises to continue 
to watch over us, to guide us and lead us in His ways, right ways, good ways, healthy ways to life. He promises always to love us, to protect us, to care for us. And as God set Cain free, so He has set us free. Forgiven and free. And with our new lease on life, we're here to share that same headline. A headline of freedom, of forgiveness, of hope, of life. We have been given it because of Jesus. His death. His willing sacrifice on that cross as He laid His life down to give us life in return by His crucifixion, His death, His payment for our sin, and ultimately His resurrection to new life. And that victory is our victory. It is our life. And it is our hope. And on this Father's Day weekend, remember. Remember the Father that you and I have. A perfect Father. A Father who will always be with you. A Father who loves you, really loves you, with an everlasting love. And a Father who has promised to care for you today and always. Now, what do we do with this? The what now for this week. I've got a couple things for you to think about and consider as you head into the week ahead. First, be aware of the Lord's presence and His promises to you this week. Secondly, be willing to be your brother's or your sister's keeper. Out of love, pray for the courage to have some of those hard conversations. And third, In your freedom, live life to the fullest, sharing Jesus' love in real and tangible ways with those around you. For Jesus' sake, amen. And that peace of God, a peace that at times goes beyond our understanding, let it guard your hearts and your minds through faith in Jesus, our brother. Amen. Let us join in confessing our faith together using the words of the Apostles' Creed 
an ancient statement of faith that God's people have been professing for a very long time, confessing together the mystery of this faith that we hold to be true, our belief and trust in God as Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. We join our voices together with theirs across time and around the world today. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day He rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence He will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Lord God Almighty, we know you to be a gracious and a loving God. As we reflect on the story of Cain and Abel, we see the power of your grace at work. Help us to believe it, to receive it, and to extend that grace to others with the lives we live, the love we share, and the words we speak. Lord, in your mercy. Heavenly Father, we pray today for all who are hurting in any way. We lift these people up to you, dear Lord, those we know and those we may not know, because we believe you to be a God who knows us, who forgives us, who loves us, and who cares deeply about us and all that concerns us and all that troubles us. We pray for your help and your healing, providing for us as you know best. May your grace abound and may your will be done. Lord, in your mercy. Lord, we praise you for those matters of celebration and rejoicing in our lives. We thank you for all the gifts of life that bring joy, smiles, and laughter. We know all good things come from you, and we are grateful for these gifts and for your presence among us. Lord, in your mercy. Father in heaven, on this Father's Day weekend, we come to you, praying for all fathers and father figures in our lives. While we know our earthly fathers are not perfect, we thank you for the part they have played in our lives and in forming and shaping us to be the people we are. For those with painful memories or hurtful experiences with men in their lives, we pray for healing and for peace to come. Lord, in your mercy. Lord God, we continue to pray for all people in our community, our country, and our world during these times times of uncertainty with this pandemic and other upheavals we are going through. We pray for President Trump and other world leaders, for all those elected and appointed in our government, for doctors, nurses, and all who are serving in healthcare professions. We pray for all in law enforcement who are very much on the front lines for so much that is happening. We pray for first responders and firefighters, we pray for the men and women serving in the armed forces here and around the world. For all these, dear Lord, we ask that you would protect them, and we pray for their health and safety, for your wisdom and guidance when it comes to the ongoing decisions that need to be made regarding all that is happening in our world and in our country. We thank you for these people and for all who serve us in so many ways. Bring healing, bring peace, Bring your love to bear. Lord, in your mercy. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, who has also taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. 
And the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make His face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look on you with favor and give you His peace. Amen. Go in peace. Serve the Lord. Thank you so much for joining us again today for worship, and I pray that today truly was uh, some encouragement for you. A couple of announcements I'd like to share. First of all, ministry continues on. A reminder that in two weeks, on Sunday, July 5th, we are reopening our doors for worship. That'll be our 8 o'clock Classic Grace here indoors, and our 9.30 Contemporary Joy Worship Service, That'll be outdoors on our West Lawn. That move to include live streaming our worship, all of that is moving ahead in a good way. In the meantime, we have men's, women's, young adults, and youth groups that are continuing to meet more and more in person, some still meeting virtually. And I encourage you to keep up to date with all that's happening through my email updates that I send out most every day. If you're not getting those, but would like to, email me at churchoffice at emmanuelloveland.org and I'll get you added to that email group. You can also stay connected through our Emmanuel app that you can search through our any app store, through our website at emmanuelloveland.org or subscribing to Emmanuel's YouTube channel, also at Emmanuel Loveland. I want to thank you as well for the offerings that you give to the Lord out of your love for Him that help keep these ministries going and enable us to do all that we're able to do. Thank you for those who have gifted us in different ways to help with the transition and the equipment that's needed for our new projectors and all of those various things that have come up. If you'd like to give but haven't, it's easy. You can Check that out at our website, emmanuelloveland.org. Look for the Give button, or you can give through our Emmanuel app. That's about it for now. I hope you can join us again next week when we continue our summer series, You Can't Make This Stuff Up, as we look at Noah and the Ark and the Flood. Under the headline, God says, Build Ark. Really? 
Thanks again for joining us. And I pray our Lord's richest blessings to you today and in the week ahead. Thank mm-hmm. you.